Hello, welcome to Marriage Connect. I'm your host, Nyokabika Mao, and I'm excited to continue with the love series. <laughs> Again, with the love, 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 love. I love the love series that God has put in my heart, and I'm really excited to be sharing it with you. Thank you again for the post and for the comments and for the likes and yeah thank you god bless you for following now we are talking about the law of love just to remind us quickly on what you talked about in the previous video i say that we are basing this topic of love on the apostle paul and the reason why we are basing this topic of love on the apostle paul it be it is because when paul was speaking about love he was speaking about love during a very difficult time he was under the kingship of king nero who was prosecuting christians and to be exact at the time that paul was writing this letter he was in a dungeon he was in jail he had been locked up for preaching the gospel and he said the only way that they could fight this fight was through love the only way paul could express the true christianity the transformation of the gospel was through love the only way that they could mark a distinction between him and the non-believers was love and so i chose this particular scenario to illustrate how difficult it is to love in our current marital status it is difficult to love at a season where marriage does not come highly recommended it is difficult to love when you seem to be loving people want to know why you love each other what are you up to mumerogana or what is happening it is difficult we are at a season where marriage has been taken so lightly and love has become like a currency of exchange where we are exchanging love for something in return we are loving because we are getting something in return but paul is encouraging us even at that difficult time when we are in a dungeon of unfaithfulness when we are in a dungeon of disrespect when we are in a dungeon of hurtful things that are happening to us that is the best time for us to experience love for us to express love towards our oppressors and our prosecutors and the reason why I am using that example is because it is in the marriage setting that people are broken to bits. It is in the marriage setting where life hurts the most. It is in the marriage setting where spouses don't believe in you, they don't support you, they don't stand behind you. It is in the marriage setting where criticism almost feels like prosecution. And that is why I want us to look at love from a different perspective understanding the times that we are in not feeling like we are talking about love without the understanding of the times that we are in we are talking about love with the proper understanding of the exact times that we are in and today for us in this particular video i want us to look at the law of love how love fulfills the law because at the end of the book of romans chapter 12 paul says that it is through love that we fulfill the law and we'll be looking at a few commandments that we have been given that apply to marriages and apply to our day-to-day -day lives and how if we honor these commandments we can be able to enjoy the fruits of love in our marriages and just a little bit of a recap to keep us together for those who haven't watched the previous video sincere love does not pretend to love it hates what is evil and clings to what is good so true love cannot love everything <coughs> true love will love what is good will actively pursue to do what is good and the word that i'm using is actively and it will pursue it will go after doing what is good so my question to you at this juncture is are you actively pursuing to do what is good towards your spouse towards your children towards the betterment of your family are you actively pursuing good do you hate what is evil because love cannot love everything and in the book of romans chapter 13 verse 8 to 10 it says let no debt remain outstanding except the continually debt to love one another for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law this scripture particularly touched my heart and i would like us to go through it step by step it says no debt remain outstanding why is there no debt remaining outstanding against us because every debt has been paid 
by the Jesus Christ. Every debt that we have incurred has been fulfilled by the sacrifice, by the ultimate sacrifice of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Through his death, through the cross, everything that stands against us, everything that condemns us, everything that presents us as unworthy and unrighteous before any man or before God has been paid in full by the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, let no debt remain outstanding. Every sin that we have committed, everywhere that we have fallen short of the glory of God, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, there is no debt that is outstanding because the cross of Jesus Christ remains relevant and it has paid for us every it has atoned for our sins and our iniquities it has set us apart we have died with christ and have risen with christ therefore there is no more condemnation therefore the old has gone and the new has come so we cannot suffer debt that has already been paid hallelujah i am tempted to preach right here but let us go on The Bible says that let no debt remain outstanding. Therefore, there is no other debt that remains outstanding except the continually debt to love one another. Why should we be in debt of loving one another? Yet every other debt has been paid. It is is because we have been saved through love. We are here today because of love. If you're in a marriage right now and you're wondering, this person, my goodness, remember, even you, you're in that position because of love. Therefore, you are in debt to love, to love your spouse. You are in debt to love your children. You are in debt to fulfill the debt of love. And it is continuous. It is non-stint. It is non- It does not stop. It is continuous. Because whosoever whosoever loves others has fulfilled the law. And this, my friends, hit me like a heart attack. And I was wondering, what is the connection between love and fulfilling the law? These are two separate things. But I went back to the background and I realized when Paul was writing about love, first of all, Paul was a scholar. He understood the law. He understood the law. He knew what was right and what was wrong. In fact, he knew it so well that he was a prosecutor. Until his encounter on the Damascus Road, he was prosecuting Christians because he did not understand. He he knew the law, but his heart did not understand the connection between love and the law. Hey, it gets better. Woo! I love this. So, he says that whosoever loves others has fulfilled the law. So let's just indulge me a little bit. Let's just look at this a little bit and see whether we can be able to understand how whosoever loves others has fulfilled the law. And I want us to make to make it unique. We want we want to special. We want to love ourselves. eh? We want to focus it on us eh? as as married couples because marriage is a is a heart. It is the backbone of a nation. He says you shall not commit adultery. It keeps getting better. I know. (laughs) You shall not commit adultery. Not murder. Not steal. Not envy. Not covet. All these commandments are summed up in one commandment. That we should love our neighbors. That we should love our Lord, that we should love as we love ourselves with all our hearts, understanding the present time. We are not ignorant of the present time. Like Paul, we understand we are at a season that is difficult to love one another. We are at a season that breaking marriages is what is praised. We are at a season that nobody is trying to recommend good marriages. We are all trying to recommend bad marriages. Every radio station is talking about failing marriages. Every TV station is talking about marriages that are not working, abusive marriages and all that. And nobody is talking about the positive marriages that are there. We understand the present times we are in. We are not ignorant 
of the season that we are in. But the Bible is telling us to show love even in this difficult time. To express love. And love is a permanent obligation. It is not temporary. It is a debt. We remain in debt. Continuously we remain in debt. Excuse me. <clears throat> to love one another. So love is permanent. It never fails and it never de- It never dies. This means we never satisfy our obligation to love. This love is in the power of the Holy Spirit. I have said it before. That this kind of love, this God-like love, this Christ-like love, we have to be helped by the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it on our own. My goodness. With our selfish nature and our sinful nature and our proneness to do things our way, we cannot be able. So when you love your spouse, you will definitely not commit adultery. Yeah. You will definitely not commit adultery. You will not dishonor God by committing adultery. You will not dishonor God and cause harm to your spouse. Very hurtful experience, very traumatizing experience to satisfy a sinful thought or a sinful desire. Contrary to our culture today, you know, eyes that are used to lust and hearts and minds that are used to enjoy immorality or sexual impurity are or bodies that are engaged in sinful physical contact are all crimes against God's marriage covenant. Because we are to remain faithful. God hates adultery so much that it is the only ground that he has given us married people to walk away from our marriages. And remember, he hates divorce. He can't stand divorce. But in the case of fornication, in the case of adultery, in the case of unfaithfulness, in the case of defiling your holy matrimonial bed, without judgment, you have been released to break the covenant. May I remind us that marriage symbolizes the relationship between God and the body of Christ. So it's very important to God. It's not, it's not a joke. It's, it's serious. This is a serious matter. It is marriage symbolizes, it's the only example, marriage is the only example that God uses to illustrate his relationship with his church. Marriage. Adultery is a sin against a husband or a wife. It is a sin against the family and the society as well. Everybody who was involved in that covenant, you are sinning against all of them. Adultery 